Hey guys. So, it's time for me to do that unboxing. Not catacombs, I did that already. It's just there. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll move it. I was, I'm gonna. I was gonna use it as a platform, but it's not necessary. My uh, game unboxing area has uh, become crowded because I'm kind of getting stuff faster than I can clear them out. Um, I'm doing flick them up today. Let me see if where it's at. Flick them up and. Again, this is not my game, but um, I got it from my brother. I think he'd enjoy this type a little bit more than me. Um, got catacombs and I don't know. Uh, we both now we both have some dexterity something, so uh, I mean there's no point in, in one of us having both of them. I can always borrow this from my brother, or he can always borrow my catacombs. For his use. I mean, we pretty much share all our games, so it says if we both have them. But he showed an interest in it early on and was kind of having some second thoughts. I had played it and my my uh, opinion of it, I'm talking about flicking them up, I played it. Um, I've only played it one time, but my opinion of it was, uh, if, if you hadn't seen my other video, it was alright. It was a little bit... I mean, it's heavy in theme, but it's light on uh, depth and richness. I think I think the Catacombs Dungeon Crawler has a lot more to offer as far as gaming content goes, but it's not as flexible as Flick 'em Up, where in uh, Catacombs you're kind of limited in the bounds of the the game board and the design of for, like those obstacles. I think uh, if, if they had made it like a deluxe version and some kind of magnetic board, I think I saw it on, um, on uh, Board Game Geek, someone had made a custom board um, with a magnetic whiteboard. And, you know, you could put obstacles where you wanted them. And, uh, but uh, aside from that, the, rule, the gameplay rules, I think, are a lot more flexible in, in Catacombs. Um, but anyway, so flick them up. No, and flick them up does not come with anything that that will guarantee or almost guarantee your pieces won't fly off the table and uh, um, the game I played uh, with some uh, some people from my gaming group at a tap house and some people were kind of buzzing a little bit towards the end of the game and pieces were flying off the table and we had to go hunt around for them and it wasn't a crowded place but I can imagine if it were crowded how annoying that would be. I mean, I don't bring certain games to uh, certain meetup groups because I don't think it's a place where I can accidentally drop a piece and then like come back for it later. I, some places don't really care um, what happens to your stuff. So, anyways, just flick them up. And uh, someone had commented on the rule book, the how thick it was for. Catacombs, or not how thick, but how many pages, but check this out. This is, uh, the flick em up. Well, the rule book is, is plenty thick. It's like the, it's pretty much like the, um, like the, uh, what should we call it? Catacombs rule book. But, uh, I, th I think this is a scenario book. It's a thick one. That's my guess. And I wasn't gonna open up these plastic ones, but I wanna, I want you guys to see. I mean, I was just going to do a basic unboxing. I'll let my brother assemble it, of course. I mean, that's half the fun, isn't it? And getting all this stuff and then being able to assemble it and do whatever you want with it. So, let's pull out. Maybe I'll leave some of the plastic on there. So, yeah. So, check this out. The scenario book was freaking thick. It's like uh, three eighths of an inch thick, and this book, this flick 'em up book, the rule book, it's got a lot of nice illustrations. But um, these pages are thicker than on catacombs. 
But I mean, it's oh, I see. It's got uh, it's like French. So it's got two languages. So really, the book is half as thick. But even then, I mean, it's plenty thick. Nice quality though. Really nice quality. So yeah, you got French and English instructions combined into one. Um, two to ten players. Uh, we played a, an eight player game, I think. And um, I'll tell you what. Uh, the way we cycled through the playing pieces, the way we played uh, that day. I think um, I think Catacombs can easily support six players or seven players. You can just have uh, different people play the the uh, overseers minions, right? I mean, two of the ten players, you're just telling people each person take a take a cowboy, and that's your guy. So, because there's ten all together, whereas Catacombs, you got one hero a piece. But in one overseer with like tons of stuff to flick around against everybody, so I mean they can easily have like, oh well, one guy can be the ultimate overseer at the end of the game, and two other people get to control the the minions to flick those around. It's it's all about flicking and being against people, so why not, you know? So anyways, you got your cowboys, you got uh, your apple dumpling gang right here, right? Those are good guys, right? <laughs> and, uh, bad guys. Or, you know, I don't know if you want to be politically correct. You should be, it, these guys could be the bad guys, for all we know, right? And these, these guys in the dapper uh, tuxedos can be the, the good guys. And you have the movement disc. Um, they have these compartments, but, I mean, how well do, do the pieces stay in here? What's this? We got some clear strips for some reason. I'm I don't know. I'm guessing the names or something. Where are these? Oh. Oh, I see. So you gotta get um, uh, protective stickers so that when you stick. That's thoughtful, I guess. A little extra something. Pardon my sniffling. So, on the the feet of the buildings, we're gonna plug into the stands. Right. These stands here. You plug them in there, and uh, you have the protective plastic stickers, the trans transparent ones. You stick them on the bottoms so that it, it protects the cardboard. Of the, which I guess is kind of cool, but uh, all right. Um, this goes to the clock tower. Put a button there. Uh, damsel in distress. Cowgirls, whatever. Uh, extra people props. Um, that crates. I threw out the barrel. I got you got barrels and these check it, these gray things are bullets. Look how big those are. You know on um on catacombs the, the arrows and stuff, the projectiles, they're they're fifty percent smaller than these. And look how thick these are. They're like as thick as a book. They're like three eighths of an inch thick. Uh, I think catacombs scales better. So I don't I don't know. Catacombs, the heroes and monsters are discs. So you can't really knock anything down, considering you you have to topple over the meeples. Yeah, you kind of need something big and fat like those bullets. Um, I also think um, flick them up is kind of finicky, right? So like if you're moving and you hit an obstacle, it cancels out your move, so you just lost that action. What? You, so you can't bump into a cactus? Why you just say uh, you lose a hit point for bumping into cactus instead of like canceling out your move? You still move, you just you know, you don't cancel it out. Oh, I need to blow my nose. Okay, so really there isn't a whole lot here. I think these are fences. These, uh, I don't know, they're big. You can grab some from uh, Agricola or something, right? The 
feet for the buildings. Yeah, it doesn't really cover the whole lot. I mean, everything else is just cardboard. But check this out. It's super thick cardboard. I think this cardboard is as thick as the game board for catacombs. Anyways, um, it's a nice box, compartmentalized, but without the baggies. I don't know how useful that is. And these little bags, I mean, your, your meeple's just going to bounce around all over the place. So I think I'm going to add extra baggies for the meeples. So at least it can be contained. I have all my extra baggies here, so I'll um I'll throw those in for my brother. I mean these came in a baggie. Why don't these these came in some cheap non reusable things? You can reuse them I guess, but once it they tears it away, they're no good. So I'll have a couple of these bags for those meeples. And uh probably for these things. Yeah, the cactus came in a Ziploc style bag, but the crates didn't. I don't get that. I don't understand why some things did and what some things did not. But there's some extra ones. One, two, three. Yeah. There you go. Um, put these back in. And, um, I mean, all this cardboard stuff is going to just sort of flop around inside too. I guess until you, you put the you put the instruction book to pop Ah. Uh, Okay, more bag for the uh, barrels and things. All right, so we'll do that. That's how they came. That was really a simple unboxing. Um, yeah, and the box is pretty nice. Um, and it can just stay like this, I guess. What I don't get is how come the the box is like this and the slides out sideways I don't they should have made it slide up from the top you know to assuming you're gonna stand the box up I mean so people can see the artwork on the shelf it would be less likely that it'll open up by itself I and mean, there is no real latch for it to keep from opening up my brother's got uh he's got a, a little boy at home so let me get something to wipe my nose real quick and I have the expansion about that so I have the expansion in the box here and I don't know um, I'm sure everything will fit in the main box but I'll leave that for my brother to combine uh, he gets to it I think that was the intent anyways it has a nice nice uh, cardboard box but um, yeah, it's it's not um, anything you really write home about. And there's plenty of space in the main box, so kind of like with um, catacombs. But I am still kind of using the expansion box just to keep everything from flopping around inside um, until I can get sleeves for the cards and things. And I've seen some gameplay videos or some previews of the expansion. Let's look them up. Sounds interesting enough. Um, we'll see. We'll just see. So I actually, I'm going to slide this back into its cardboard, this main main box. And here's a here's the back of it. Let's see close up of it. If you're not familiar with it, there's three languages on here. So maybe maybe there's German instructions too. But I only saw two. Well, I only bothered to look through the French instructions a little bit. So, anyways, that's that. Let's get it right side up. All right. And then we have it kind of bulges out of the box too. Ooh, look at that. It has a nice. Now I've seen this in the preview. I totally forgot though. It has a nice carrying pouch. You can hear all the plastic inside. 
and more cardboard. A lot of it. Oh, and the scenario book is just as, almost as thick as the other one. This is about a quarter inch thick. This is a little smaller, but holy cow. Got a lot of visual references, which is great. Scenarios. Um, don't be fooled. This this game has the potential of uh, occupying several tables if you allow it. You got canyons. Uh, what is that? A noose? I, f I forget exactly. A lasso, I think, is what it is. A lasso. You. You have a female outlaw, Laura. Looks like an outlaw. I mean, she's got a scarf, but it almost looks like it's covering her mouth, even though it's not. Some tokens, I'm guessing they're hit points. Horse token, right there. Another building, I'm not sure what to make of that, little shacks. So, you got that. Um, now the, this bag has a ribbon for drawstrings, which I think are kind of, I don't know. I don't like them, but it's not my game, so whatever. What do we have here? Big bags and uh, horses. So now they have individual bags for everything and one big bag. Maybe I'll take. Maybe I'll take my other bags back. They, they, there's plenty of bags here now. I mean, I don't know why those horses should be in separate bags. See, and now these are all in Ziploc style bags. So they got feet for the houses. Um. Well, for the buildings, where are these? I forget what these, these are rubber bands for something. I forget what they are. Um, the elastic bands for something. You can see that. Uh, black and white. I forget what they're for, but they're important, I'm sure. Um, I'll leave those extra bags up in there. Whatever. Um, oh, and then this is, I gotta take this out. So one of the things you're supposed to be able to do is you're supposed to be able to knock cowboys off their horses. And so they give you this ramp thing. So when you flick the piece, it'll fly up and you're supposed to be able to knock people off the horses. Um... I don't know how well this, I mean, I'm sure they play tested it plenty, but I don't know how well that's supposed to work. Um, but, uh, yeah. Weird things like that. So you got canyon rules. Um, you got all sorts of goodies. Is there anything in there? Yeah. Alright. And that's, that's it. Wow, this is like, this may be my quickest unboxing, I rambled on about, um, I even rambled on about catacombs for a little bit too, so, which I thought this was, this is how catacombs are going to be, but because of all the freaking stickers and stuff, I'll show you catacombs then, turn out really short, I'll show you what I did for storage for catacombs, ooh, I did not do a good job of repackaging stuff. It's bulging out so bad. kind of bulging out but it's pretty bad now right. so flick them up is actually a very minimal setup catacombs took me like an hour to get all the stickers on luckily they were color coded and size coded because they have so many different sizes so you can see the difference in size of boxes. Um, in fact, I can fit everything right as it is now. I think I can fit everything in Flick'em Up. 
inside my catacombs box. There's still more space. So, that's what I ended up doing. I combined all the pieces. I have to mark them up with um, a Sharpie. I have to label the bags. What I did was I took all the all the level one, two, three, and four creatures, and I separated them to different bags. That's what I did. Because because you're gonna get the cards, and then it's gonna tell you the the dungeon cards or the room cards. It'll tell you oh. Get these creatures, level 1, 2, 3, or 4, whatever. And um, we're going to sift through them. And so, I, before I had them dumped into the lid of the game, and it was just really hard to sift through them, if I can find them per level, these are the characters, by the way. So I have all the characters in one, one baggie, too. Um, if I can find them by level, the card's going to tell me which level the, the creature is. Then I can just search through. These are all level 4 creatures. Got the big gelatinous cube in there. Which is cool. Um, these are level one creatures. It's just gonna make it easier to find. Now, cleanup is gonna be a pain in the butt, I guess, because um, there will be a mix of creatures in each one. I'll probably have to go and separate them again after every every other play or something like that. I mean, I don't, I can't see how how there will be any. These are level three. How it's going to be uh, any easier to sort them all out, you know, otherwise. So, that's what I did there. You can see, you can probably see that I have all the cardboard laying flat in the box. Squeeze out all the air. And then in here, just to keep from bags flopping around, and the cards, of course. Um, I have the cards separated, the monster deck, uh, I, I have items and poisons and the, the, uh, overseers cards in that one, I have, these are the, uh, the map rooms, or the room cards, um, and items, and hero, well, let's see, actually these are hero cards, sorry. The hero cards and their starting items. Have that. And then these are all the unstickered tokens plus the uh, um, the bonus flame columns, which I did not use for some replay, which I think I should have. It was late, and so I, I was glad that my brother was was uh, open to play testing it. Um, with me. Still didn't get a whole lot of things down. I think I'm going to uh, review the rules a little bit more and like I'm still a little bit unsure of how that those metered monsters work. So if someone can describe to me in detail and reword it and give some examples I would love to uh, get the skinny on that because I did not I'm, I think I'm a little unsure about it but um, the way I'm going to play it next time is going to conflict greatly with um, how I played it the first time. So, anyways, that's Catacombs. That's Flick Em Up. Both of their expansions. I am. I kind of want to get the Catacombs expansion like the other ones just because they're there. But man, they're so expensive. Um, I saw one set on eBay. Someone's, you know, charging 75 bucks for it. It's the Kickstarter version, so, you know, I don't know the game enough. I've only played it once. I like it. But just to have everything and then another 75 bucks. That the $75 on eBay costs more than what I paid for the core set plus uh, Caverns of Solo. And then if you purchase it direct from, from Elzera Games, it's still 45 bucks plus shipping. And the content is nowhere near... What uh, Caverns of Soloth came with. So, uh, so it's hard. I mean, they're custom wooden bits. They're still only, they're st still discs, I guess. I guess I, if I really wanted to, I could purchase some generic discs and print out my own stickers or whatever. But uh, I don't want to steal 
it's a good game, so I should just pay for it. But it's just pricey, you know? It's crazy. Anyways, that's those. Um, I'll probably end up getting the uh, the chicks in the catacomb and uh, the zombie horde sets just just to complete my set. I mean, it's it's a third edition set, and who knows? This might, this might be their greatest set edition, so who knows if they're going to do it, revise it again, or add more stuff. But um, what uh, Greater Than Games is doing with Sentinels of the Multiverse right now, they've, they've created the final Sentinels expansion. That's why I want. That's why I got that game in the first place, because there was an end to it. They weren't going to make unlimited expansions till you're blue in the face it's a it was an awesome game when it came out and it still has a huge following it's i think it's an okay game um lots of variety uh, it, it it doesn't hit the table as often as um well in my my personal group it doesn't uh but there, there are a couple other folks in my my uh local gaming group that uh they bring it, so I actually don't need my copy in the store. Someone's always got it. Um, but there's lots of variety, and you know, you only need enough uh, heroes to support the amount of players you have. Um, you can use an app to count the, the uh, hit points and um, whatever, token trackers, whatever, what have you. And then um, you only need a villain, maybe two villains, and, and a couple of environments for some variety to uh, play the game. So, like, one complete set or a couple of sets can support like two or three games going simultaneously um if you really wanted so anyways flick them up little commentary account kind of comes and um just because i felt like it uh a blurb on sales of the multiverse games that as far as i can tell they don't really need much more expansion there's plenty of gameplay right there I believe Flick 'em Up is already. I mean, I don't know if there are any rumors, but people are open to the fact that there might be further expansions coming up pretty soon. So, you know, whatever. Um, hopefully, in the next expansion, they'll have bumpers to uh, or borders to keep things from flying off the side of the table, especially with that ramp and expecting uh, uh, to flick stuff in the air. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's um, going to need something to contain all that. So, anyways, thanks for watching.